as I come to the end of this week, I thank you, Lord, for every moment of it, for the times when my soul has rejoiced, the times when my heart has been heavy, and the ordinary, everyday routine. Thank you for being with me through it all. I offer all of this with all that I am to you in worship, my Father, my Saviour, my friend. Amen. Sing, I will sing, I will sing to the Lord, for He is highly exalted. He is my strength and my shield, and He has become my sound. sing, I will sing to the Lord, for He is highly exalted. He is my strength and my shield, and He has become my salvation. He Welcome back to Refresh from New Silsworth Methodist Church in Sunderland. My name is Richard Bainbridge and I am the minister at Silsworth. Well, folks, we're living in very unsettling times and uh, I'm sure like me, your heart breaks for all those caught up in the war in Ukraine. So many innocent lives lost, so many people having to flee their homes, so much fear and pain. Later on in our service, we'll pray for Ukraine and I would urge you to do what you can to support the relief efforts that are ongoing. We've been channeling support through the Methodist Relief and Development Agency all we can. And I will leave a link in the video details below so that you can make an online donation if you so wish. This is our second week exploring the theme of justice, a theme that feels particularly relevant just now. And today we began with a song based on the song of Moses and Miriam in Exodus chapter 15, a song that gives praise to God for his deliverance. And this is very much the theme of our service today. So 
as we come to worship, let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you that you are a God of justice and we look to you today in worship. Renew us as we worship that we might see beyond the utter devastation of war and glimpse the peace and justice that you desire for all. Amen. Come to God now with our prayers of praise and of confession. So let us pray. Loving God, you are the one who hears, who sees and who calls us to work with you to create a world where justice is experienced by all and where all can live in peace. In a com complex world of conflict and confrontation, we look to you for those values that will anchor us in truth and love. We praise you that you are righteous and holy. Lord Jesus, you said that you were the way, the truth and the life. Thank you for those words of promise and help us to walk in your way, that we might know what is true and live the life of justice, peace and love that you call us to. Holy Spirit, empower us this week to live for what is true to be faithful to the one who has called us and to work tirelessly for the kingdom of God, where all can know justice and live in peace. Amen. And a prayer of confession. Lord God, you have shown us such love and stretched out your arms to draw us into your embrace. Yet we so often fail to show that love within our lives. 
or to recognise its source. Forgive us our short-sightedness for the times we've failed to see your love in the generosity of a friend or a stranger, the shoulder to cry on, a willing ear to listen, a word of encouragement, holding our hand that extra mile. Forgive us for failing to notice how much you care for us. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we continue to explore the theme of justice this week, we are taking a look at that great foundational story of liberation in the book of Exodus. And in particular, we're looking at the first five chapters, which I would encourage you to read in their entirety. But for now, we will read selected verses. Eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt, who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labour. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. They were ruthless in all their demands. Years passed and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help and their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and knew that it was time to act. Then the Lord told Moses, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. After this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him that they told him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go so they may hold a festival in my honour in the wilderness. Is that so, retorted Pharaoh? And who is this Lord? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. But Aaron and Moses persisted. The God of the Hebrews has met with us, they declared. So let us take a three day journey into the wilderness so we can offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. If we don't, he will kill us with a plague or with the sword. Pharaoh replied, Moses and Aaron, why are you distracting the people from their tasks? Get back to work. Look, there are many of your people in the land and you are stopping them from their work. Amen. Last week, we began to explore how we might embrace justice by taking a look at the creation stories in Genesis. We saw there that all human beings are created in the image of God in equality and justice. We're also created in unity and diversity, which allows interdependence and the possibility of connections and relationships. So God brings into being a creation that is abundant and generous, a just environment where all can flourish, a baseline from which we can build and create. Then in Genesis 3, it all goes wrong. Interdependence is replaced by independence and abundance by scarcity. 
And that narrative sadly continues throughout the book of Genesis. There follows an increase in conflict, injustice and violence. And by the time we arrive at the beginning of the book of Exodus, God's people are in bondage in Egypt. It is a long, long way from the Garden of Eden. But liberation is just round the corner. So this week we look at justice as it is worked out in the book of Exodus, from bondage to liberation. When we meet Jacob's descendants at the beginning of Exodus, we find them very firmly on one side of a them and us divide. Egyptians on one side and Hebrews the other. This divide is revealing in what it teaches us about justice. It is an unequal divide where one side holds all the power and creates a system of oppression because they're able to see and label the others as dangerous and threatening. And injustice is seen as physically and economically demeaning. And into this difficult narrative comes a God who hears, remembers and sees. Justice begins when someone is listened to and the hearer is moved to compassion. And here in Exodus, God responds to his people's cry, not for help, but a cry of pain. And we're allowed to understand that it is God's responsibility to respond and to do something about that. So God witnesses his people's suffering. He acknowledges the reality of that suffering. And in due course, he confronts the oppressor with the truth. So God's choice is to listen, to hear, to see, to know, and then to act in partnership with his people. The temptation when confronting injustice is to intervene on behalf of the oppressed. But we discover a better way here of working with, of coming alongside the oppressed. We saw last week that as individuals go their own way, multiple visions of justice abound. So soon we become fragmented and justice has as many forms as there are individuals. To label something as being unjust is to form a judgment. So, who gets to decide what is just? Well, in Exodus, it's clear it is God who decides, and it should be God who shapes the imagination of individuals and communities so that some consensus on justice can be formed. As we place the story of Exodus into its wider biblical context, we see that it refers back to the covenant that God made with his people and it leads into a future where God will continue to journey with them. So justice is an ongoing task of learning and responding. It will always be a political task but will never be allied to one party or one system. All political systems are open to an abuse of power dependent as they are on the fallible human hearts of their leaders. And the leaders of the two sides in Exodus are Pharaoh and Moses. In their opening encounter, Moses brings God's request to Pharaoh. Let my people go to celebrate a festival to me. It is in reality a request for freedom of worship, something that totalitarian leaders always view as subversive. For freedom of worship infers freedom of thought. And Pharaoh is not happy with this and he doubles down on the injustice and oppression by making the Israelite slaves work even harder. This often happens as the oppressed seek justice but Moses and Aaron persist and as plague follows plague the pressure for justice mounts until liberation becomes a reality as the Red Sea is crossed and the Israelites head out into the wilderness and a new beginning. But the years of injustice have taken their toll on the imagination of this people. It is hard for them to believe that they are loved and cherished by God. So the years in the wilderness become years of learning and growing, where God feeds them, not because they've earned it, but because they are his and they are needy. And little by little, their self-esteem and worth are reconstructed. And we get a little glimpse back to Eden, a glimpse of abundance and generosity in the provision of manna, where in the gathering and eating, all are equal and all have enough. This is a lesson in radical justice and radical trust. 
We too must understand that years of injustice to individuals and communities can sometimes take years to heal. And the people are given the gift of the Passover meal, an annual remembrance of a God who loves and saves his people, a God of justice. In the sharing of the Passover and the reliance on God in the wilderness, this people will learn a new pattern of living based on a God of mercy and justice. They won't always get it right, but when they do, it will be a sign of God's merciful justice at work. In the story of bondage to liberation in Exodus, we call to be honest about our own limitations as human beings, particularly if and when we're in positions of power. We're reminded of our complete dependence on God, who helps us to do justice, motivated by a compassion that sees and listens to those who are hurting. Exodus is a prophetic book, calling us to something better. And we too are prophets in a broken world. And in Isabel Hamley's words, the task of the prophet is to enable the people to see what is wrong, to enter into the suffering and call for redress, yet to do so in ways that bear the seeds of a different world. A world that can imagine the wolf lying with the lamb. Amen. Oh, the Lord, our strength and song, highest praise to Him belongs. Christ the Lord, our conquering King, Your name we raise, Your triumph sing. Praise the Lord, our mighty warrior. Praise the Lord, the glorious one. By his hand, we stand in victory. And by his name, we overcome.
when faced with the enormity of suffering brought about by war, words somehow seem insufficient. In our prayers for all caught up in the horror of the war in Ukraine, we use a minimum of words as we yearn for peace and justice. So let us pray. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for world leaders, for compassion, strength and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis, we may reach out in solidarity to our sisters and brothers in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and indeed for the whole world. brings us to the end of our service for today. Uh, our services in church are held every Sunday morning from 10.30. So if you're in the Sunderland area, we would love you to come along and join us and be a part of what goes on there. You'll find us at the corner of North Street in New Soaksworth. Uh, we have activities for uh, the kids too, so uh, something for all the family. Everyone is welcome. No need to book, just turn up uh, you are assured of a warm welcome, and if you wish, please stay with us after the service for refreshments. Please check out the playlist that goes with this week's uh, service. There is a link at the end of the video and also in the video details below. Next Sunday, as we continue to look at embracing justice through this season of Lent, we'll be looking at what it takes to build communities of justice. Lent groups will continue online via Zoom on Tuesday evenings at 7 and in person in church um, on a Thursday afternoon at 2pm and you are very welcome to join either group. Thank you so much for being part of our Refresh Worship this week. We look forward to worshipping with you next Sunday and until then, God bless.
As a new week begins, I humbly ask you to bless me. Bless me with strength and courage to face whatever comes. Bless me with warmth and compassion to give to everyone I meet. Bless me with wisdom and insight that I might make a difference. Walk with us, Lord, throughout this week, that the light of your love may be seen in us. Amen.